Hi, I'm Tiffany of Tip Stitch and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and if you like this video, please click the subscribe box below so that you can make sure you catch all of my future videos right when they're released. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for tuning back in and welcome back. Today's video is going to be all about the Ivy Goddess Gown. If you're a part of the IG sewing community, then you probably have heard about this new pattern company called Ivy, I-V-I-Y-E. I'll tag to their IG and their website down below in the description box. Um, so the founder reached out to me to see if I would sew up the goddess gown and give my review. I decided to take it a step further and do this step-by-step -step sort of sew along video so that I can show you how to create your very own goddess gown. Now, this dress is actually really easy to put together. It's a nice loose fitting caftan. It comes in three lengths. It has a v-neck. The hardest thing about the whole thing might be sewing the facing and I do have a tip about that um, if you keep watching in the video. But I wanted to tell you that it is started by a black woman who's based out of LA and so far she's already launched four patterns just this summer. There are two separate patterns, the L and the Amon, and then there are two dress patterns, the Ivy gown and the goddess gown. Like I said, this is the goddess gown. If you want a full review about the pattern itself, then make sure you click the link below to my blog where I'll have my typical pattern review. I might even come back and do a review video about like the fit and the process of sewing the Ivy uh, goddess gown but this video is more going to be me just walking you through step by step how to create this yourself at home on your sewing machine which you can probably do in a day or a weekend so here is the instructions for the ivy goddess gown i always like to print my um, instructions out booklet style from adobe i've showed you guys this in previous videos because you can condense four sheets of paper down to one. These only have four sheets of instructions, so I just needed one sheet of paper. Um, I like it for a variety of reasons. One is that it uses less paper and less ink. Two is that I like the booklet sort of style, like I like it being more condensed. And three, this is easier to fit in my envelope when it's time for me to store my PDF patterns. So here you see you get an overview of all three lengths. You get the line drawings for each. You get some instructions and in sizing um, and fabric yardage requirements here. And lastly, you get your instructions, which are honestly just those five lines of text um, and some more information here about printing the fabric, fab, uh, pattern and what type of fabric you should use for the project. So it's very minimalistic. I am used to seeing illustrations or photos for each step of a sewing project, but admittedly, this is a really easy project to sew. So let's take a look at the pattern pieces because you're going to want to cut these out to get started. And first you have the front pattern piece. Behind it I have the back pattern piece. There's also facings for both the front and the back. And then there are two pocket pieces. There's a pocket piece and a pocket facing. Um, so let me add a little bit about what I think about some of these pattern pieces. One, I'm not very used to seeing patterns printed full size if they can be printed on the fold. Um, I don't really see how this would help you as far as pattern placement on your fabric because these are such large pieces that I don't really think it matters if you cut it on the fold or if you cut it in one single waft. For me, because I have limited space, you can see this is my cutting table. It's about 36 inches wide and it butts up against a wall because I just don't have enough room in my sewing space for it to free float in the middle of the room. Um, so it's really hard for me to cut things. Say that I move this around to cut the pattern piece like this. It's very hard for me to get around and cut those sides. So what I did is I decided to go ahead and just make this a cut on the fold pattern piece, which basically means I just took it here at the V right in the middle and then I measured the, the middle width of the hem and I just folded the entire piece in half. And so now I have a piece where I should probably make a little notation here that says cut on the fold. So that is why the back is already folded is because I actually cut both of these pieces on the fold. The only time when I might not want to do this if I was working with um, horizontal stripes because then I really want to make sure I cut everything on a single layer and make sure that my stripes are completely true. But for this pattern that I'm working on, this leopard print, it doesn't matter and so I'd much rather cut it on the fold. 
Um, the other thing that I noted on these front and back pieces is that I only have, she sent me the AO, so I just, I thankfully I didn't have to cut and cut, tape and cut, um, but there's only the one length. This is just the file for the maxi dress. I'm used to seeing hem lines for the different views when the only thing is really different is the hem length. Um, like, you know, you have a view A, view B cut here, view C cut here, or it says like knee, midi, maxi or something. Um, you don't have those lines here. To my understanding, those files are all separate. So what I did is I held this up against my body and decided where I wanted the knee length to fit on me, folded it and then marked it with the straight ruler to say that this would be where my knee length is. If I ever made a midi length, I would do the same. And if I wanted to hack it into a midi, I would do the same down below. Um, I originally was gonna make the knee length, like I mentioned, but I'm gonna go ahead and make the maxi, so I needed the full pattern piece. But I did wanna point that out because I thought that was different and a waste of paper if you were trying to make all three views. Also, the pockets. I didn't quite get the shape of the pocket, and because there's no visual to go along with the instructions, I just decided not to use these. Um, and then I did the same thing with the facings as I went ahead and cut them in, I mean, folded them in half so that they could be uh, cut on the fold as well. And so I cut all four of my main pattern pieces on the fold. So I'm gonna put the pattern pieces aside and actually look at the pieces. And um, this is the front piece you can see by the V. This is the back piece you can see the scoop neck there. Let's bring it up closer. Um, and then I cut, of course, the front facing, which is the V, and the back facing that has more of that um, U shape. And then the pockets. Like I said, I did not use the pockets that she included in the pattern. These pockets that I cut here are from a Mimi G pattern. It's just the default pocket shape that I use when I add pockets to a pattern that doesn't have them. Um, I think these came from the Katie dress, I think. Um, it's just a nice big pocket. And since this is a very loose gown, like a caftan, I wanted nice big pockets where I could fit my hand in and my huge phone and, <laughs> and everything else. So those are your pieces. She doesn't call for interfacing for the facings, um, but I believe that interface uh, facings of woven garments should be interfaced with fusible or so on interfacing so I cut one for the front and one for the back and I just used this Pellon interfacing designer light that I had in my stash already I bought it when it was on clearance a while back from Joann's so this is what I use because it's for light to mid-weight fabrics um, and this is a polyester, so I feel like that'll work out. Okay, so let's get started on the sewing. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our facings by interfacing them. And I'm going to show you a trick I learned from, I wish I could remember who, <laughs> but I'm sure it was on Instagram. Um, and I just want to share it, pass it along with you if it was something that you didn't know. Um, it might have been Erica Bunker. Um, is how to create a nice clean edge on your inner facings. Typically, if you're doing a facing piece on a jacket or a top or whatever, you are going to stitch this outside edge to your um, neckline to create that clean neckline. And then you're gonna finish off this outer edge with like either a narrow hem or a rolled hem or you know, uh, you're just gonna serge it so you don't get any fraying. But a nice way to do this, and I'll show you on the back facing piece, is to put the interfacing, a uh, fusible interfacing, and the facing itself together, right sides facing. So the right side of your fabric and the non buppy side, the non fusible side to that part. And then the outside here is going to be the bumpy with the glue. And then this is going to be a wrong side on the outside. So right sides facing. So what you're gonna do for this back piece is this is the right side. It's very similar on my fabric. You probably can't tell on camera, but this is the right side. And I'm gonna take the facing piece with the right side, the side that doesn't have glue. I'm gonna put those sides together. I am gonna start in the middle because that way I think we'll end up with a less skewed piece. This um, 
pattern. This fabric is actually pretty silky, so I'm sure that they're not cut exactly. Um, mirror image, even though I cut it on the fold, because it does slip. So you're just going to want to go along that outer edge that you would typically finish with your serger or whatever method you would use. And I'm going to pin. And you're going to do this on both sides. Like I said, I just wanted to start in the center. And now I'm going to do the other side, lining up that raw edge all the way around. One more. All right, so now I have the back and the front facing pieces um, pinned together. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I am going to serge just using a regular stitch all the way around uh, the outside of both the front and back facing. So now you can see, hopefully, maybe, that I've sewn it together with a half inch seam allowance here on the edge. Um, I used the very fluorescent uh, thread, so maybe you can't see it, but right there, you can probably see it. So what I'm going to do, especially for this V-neck, is trim the seam allowances down. So you're going to trim that pretty close, trim up both sides. Being careful to get close to the stitching, but not cut through it, of course. Same thing for the other side of the V. You're going to want to get close to that point but not cut through it. Then we're going to do the same thing for the back facing. Just cut really close to your stitching along the curve. All the way around. And now that you have that stitched, you can fold it so that the fusible side now touches the wrong side like so and then you have this nice clean edge on the part of your facing that's going to be loose see how nice that's going to look so again I just sort of finger press this to get it like I want it get rid of my trash throw it in my fabric scrap basket that I keep right there on the corner of my sewing table, cutting table. So I'm gonna sort of roll it down and finger press it. Um, let's see if I can zoom in here. I'm gonna roll it sort of down and finger press it so that that edge is flush and the edge is me close at the top. All right, and then I'm going to take my hot iron that I already have going. I like to use my Black & Decker for this because if it gets dirty, I don't really mind. It's my cheaper iron. Um, and then press. Um, I should use a pressing cloth, but I don't know where mine is right now. So um, do as I say and not as I do. Use your pressing cloth, especially because the fabric that I'm using is a polyester. Um, and so it is prone to burning. But I like to give it a little bit of steam and let it sit there for the allotted amount of time it says on the instructions. Um, because this is a cordless iron, if you hear the beeping, that means that it needs to be recharged so it can heat back up. So we'll wait a couple of seconds. It should beep for me again. Once the base turns green here, we'll be ready to do this last little portion. While I'm waiting for that to heat up, I'll go ahead and fold this V part out. And this is why you want it. Oops, look, the interfacing so lightweight I tore through it, but it's fine. We just, you know, sort of want it to add a little bit of heft. Once we press it, it will go back down. You just want to press that corner out. You can use a pin if you need to to really get in there, uh, like I'm doing. And that's fine. So, like I said, you can see right there where it tore. But I'll just make sure when I press it that I make that sort of meet up and it'll be fine. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so now that my iron is back to green, 
I am going to go ahead and press that last little bit, give it some steam. Sometimes I just let the iron set there, just don't forget it. <laughs> uh, so press that, let that glue melt and really set. And now you see on your facing, let me zoom back out a little bit. You have a nice clean edge on your facing piece. And then this raw edge here is what you're going to sew to your neckline. So you have this beautiful finished clean edge. Everything's fused together. You don't have the added hassle of having to just stitch this, stitch this or serge this. It's just nice and clean. So isn't that a cool trick? All right, the next step, or the first step really in the instructions calls for you to attach the collars, uh, which I think means the facings of the pieces which we have already prepped and put off to the side. However, what I'm going to do is attach the front and the back together, then attach the front and the back facings together, and then attach those two together. That's just the method that I typically do and I'm just gonna stick with it. So I have the back piece laid down here, right side up. I'm gonna take the front piece here, right side, down and I'm going to match the notches that we have here on the sleeve. Um, yes, right there we have a teeny tiny notch on the back and the front. So I am going to line those up and pin that together. Um, I am using a pretty thin polyester so I'm having to make sure that I'm picking out my sharpest pin so it doesn't like snag the fabric. So I'm probably just gonna place three, but place as many as you need to feel comfortable. Um, I'm just not a big pinner. So I'm gonna do three there, and then let's go to the other shoulder. We're gonna find that first notch there in the back, and then we're gonna find the notch here in the front. And we're going to line up those two notches to start, pin there. I'm going to move sort of to the end of the sleeve. Those line up, thankfully. I didn't cut anything too weird. Pin that, and then just some point in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and pin there. Oh, that needle was a little dull, but it's okay. All right, so now that we have both shoulders, pinned. Um, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew both of these together using the seam allowance for this pattern, which I think is half an inch. So now that I've sewn both shoulder seams together um, on both sides, you, have, you can see that the neckline is coming together. So we have the v-neck here in the front for the v and then the scoop sort of in the back here for the back seam. And we have done the same thing for the facings. Here is the V of the front facing and the back of the back facing. Now is a good time too to go ahead and attach your label. I usually do it at the end, but it's easier to do it now because there's less fabric. Um, you can go ahead and just stitch that right in here. Um, but I'll go ahead and attach my facing to the dress and I'll add my label later. So I'm going to start with the shoulder seam. So this is the front and this is the front of the dress. And you want to match the shoulder seams and then we'll match the V. Um, you'll notice here that I also went ahead and finished off with my serger, the seam here. Um, I did that with this white thread so it would be easier to see and because I was too lazy to <laughs> change my serger thread. It actually usually has gray in it but I just finished doing a white project so I'm going to fold that serge edge to the back so up um, so that that seam presses easier towards the back and then I'm going to finger press it on the facing which would have been better if I actually pressed it to the seam here. All right, so you're gonna line up those two seams. You have the seam here of your shoulder seam, and then you have the seam here of your facing. We're gonna line that up and pin. Get my pins closer. 
pin here. I'll pin on both sides just to keep this. I like to press the face, finger press the facing open like so. And then make sure this isn't all twisted like this somehow got. And then you're going to want to pin the V here in the dress to the V of the facing. Get that lined up good so that you don't get any weird kinks when you um, sew it together. And then let's pin the other shoulder. Again, we'll press the seam allowance up and finger press or really press the facing open. Line up those two seams so they're nice and even. Pin there. I'm going to sort of pin diagonally to catch both sides. All right. So now you see that we have the V pressed. I'm going to go ahead, I mean pinned, I'm going to go ahead and pin the center back. I cut a notch when I cut the fabric so that I could make sure that that lined up well. There's no notch on the pattern piece, but I just almost always put a notch at the center front and center back of anything that I'm making. So we'll pin there. So from those four pins, we can fill in all the pins and make sure that everything is together nicely. We have everything pinned all along the facing here. We're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way. You are going to sew down here to the center of the V, um, pivot, and then continue sewing all around until it's closed. And then we'll come back and press everything or understitch and press everything to the inside. All right, so you can see that I've stitched the facing to the bodice of the dress, right? And so now we're going to understitch. And understitching is actually really simple. You are first going to come here to this point of the V in your stitching. And you're going to cut really close to, but not through, the point of the V. So you're going to do just like that, all right? And then to understitch, you're going to fold the seam allowance over to the interface or the facing side. So you're going to press this over, you're going to put it under your machine, and you are going to sew very close to the stitch line that you already have here. And what that does is when you're wearing the dress, right, this is the outside of the dress, when you're wearing the dress, it keeps it from rolling forward this way. Under stitching keeps it folded under so that you have this nice clean line. So you're basically just going to do that snip and then you're going to repeat this stitch but just maybe an eighth of an inch over, a quarter of an inch ov over, and then you're going to trim along uh, off the excess seam allowance so that you don't have bulk. All right, I have come back from understitching. You can see uh, the understitching there. Hopefully there's the stitch line where I attached the facing to the bodice, and then there's a little bit over that little stitch line, and that is the understitching. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a press so that everything lays flat. I did take my little scissors and come in here and trim away just the littlest bit of um, seam allowance so that you didn't have any bulk here at this seam. If you have duck build scissors, this is the time to use them. I do not have any, but I have cut through my fabric or my facing before using these sharp pointy scissors. So duck build is definitely the way to go. I need to add a pair to my collection. Because this is polyester, I am going to print it with the wrong, uh, press it with the wrong side up. Because if I am going to get any distortion to the fabric, I'd rather it be to the wrong side that gets the most of the heat. So I have it set on the synthetic setting. I'm using my trusted Oliso iron because I love it. And I'm just going to sort of give it a good press, especially along this pointed V here because we want to make sure that that's nice and sharp. Flatten the other side down. Give it a good press. Same thing for the back. I'm going to get it sort of nice and laid flat and give it a good press so that that lays nice and clean.
don't want to give it too much steam or heat because like I said this is a polyester but now you see that you have a very clean neckline bring it up a little closer I'll cut those loose threads and you have a very nice clean sharp move those threads V right so that's nice and clean that's going to be great again you can insert your tag here um, and then to keep the facing from wanting to com come out completely you can just right along the shoulder seam come in here and tack it uh, with some hand stitching or if you want you can stitch in the ditch right along here and that'll keep this flat here at the shoulder seams and that should keep everything else from wanting to flip out but a good press and the more you press it the more it will want to stay in anyway and so now we're going to move on to adding the pockets all right i have surged the curved edge of my pockets um so i did not surge this straight edge where you're going to attach to your side seam but i did attach the curved i mean surge the curved part of the pocket and i did this for all the pocket pieces and now we're going to make sure that we attach these right sides facing to the front and the back of our dress. Now remember, I'm using this pocket that I like from a Mimi G pattern instead of the pocket that came with the Ivy dress pattern because I just, I don't get the shape of this pattern. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. And pockets are a matter of personal preference. I just wanted something large enough that I could fit my hand in comfortably and that I could fit my huge note phone in comfortably. So both of those fit in this pocket great and that's why I like to use this pocket a lot. So if you have used the pocket that came with the pattern as you probably should, then you can attach that to the, however it goes, to the side seam here. But what I'm gonna do is use my pocket right sides facing and attach it. I'm gonna make sure that I uh, line up this bottom edge of the pocket with the bottom notch here. My pocket isn't the same size, you can see it's a little smaller and differently shaped than the other pocket so um it's not going to line up with the notches that i transferred completely but because i would rather my pocket be too low than too high i'm just going to go ahead and attach it to the bottom point of the pocket and oops, long serger thread i'm going to attach it to the top and then i will sew this pocket um with a very narrow like three-eighths of an inch quarter of an inch probably three-eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance along the edge and then I'm going to surge this entire edge from up under the dolman sleeve here all the way to the bottom hem once the whole side is surged I'm then going to flip this over and so uh, understitch the pocket just to make sure that it stays inside the dress the same reason why we understitch the neckline so we're going to stitch it at 3 8 of an inch surge this whole side sleeve to him and then we're going to go back and understitch just here on the pocket so you can see here i have attached the pocket to the side of my front and back seams of front and back pieces you can see here that i uh, I basted it to attach it, then I surged this whole edge. You can see that surge there. And then I went ahead and I said understitched um, before on the previous step, but what I really meant was like edge stitch, like top stitch along the edge here to keep the pocket pressed out because you want the pocket to stay going inside the dress. Um, and so now we're almost done, really. We've made a lot of progress. We are going to attach the side seams from the dolman sleeve here at the top all the way along the side around the pockets and down to the hem so i always like to start with the pockets or the notches um but i just typically start with the pocket so i'm going to match up the top of the front and back pocket and pin and then make sure that the bottoms of the pockets also line up and they do and pin and what you want to do um, on most pockets is well I'll show you let me finish pinning I also pin around the pocket um, not a whole lot but I, just to sort of keep it in place especially with this uh, slinkier fabric I like to pin around the pocket like so put like maybe four or five um, around the curve of the pocket all right and then you're going to continue down the side 
below the pocket with pins and you can pin as far apart or as closely together as you like. I'm just going to add one, go down to several inches, line up the edges, add another, keep going. until you get to close to the end I, my hems don't always line up because I'm not the straightest cutter so once I get down to this point and get everything stitched then I'll trim everything off so it's even and then we want to go back up to the sleeve portion and make sure that we pin right there at the little angle cut for the sleeve hem pin right there and then pin along the dolman curve for the underside of the sleeve there are notches so line those up i can still see them even though i've served my edge if you want to use a marker and mark them you could do that too it's going to make sure that's distributed well and pin that back in place. So now we have this whole side pinned from under the sleeve to the bottom. So we're going to repeat this for the other side and then sew using half an inch, I think is the seam allowance for this pattern. I didn't see where it stated that anywhere um, along. So for to go around your pocket, uh, if you haven't sewn a side pocket before, you're going to start stitching here. You're going to go all around to about five eighths of an inch down, pretty much where my pin is. And then you're going to pin around, I mean, you're going to go ahead and sew around the pocket back to that five eighths of an inch seam. Then you're going to lift your needle, or at least I do. Uh, and then I put this back under and I go up about an inch so that I have, so like things don't fall out of my pocket. So you have a little bit of a a, a motion that goes down like that I'll go up probably about an inch from where my pocket meets the dress so about here and then I'll sew a straight line with the seam allowance all the way down to the bottom hem so you're going to do that for both sides once you've gone ahead and pinned the other side of your dress together all right I'm back from my machine and I've sewn the entire side of both sides of the front and back together starting with the edge of the dolman sleeve here all the way down around the pocket and all the way down to the bottom hem of the dress I've done the same thing for the other side and then I went ahead and finished the raw edge of the sleeves with my serger you could do a zigzag stitch you could do a double fold over with a bias tape i don't know whatever you want to use to finish off this edge we're going to fold this over the seam allowance which i think is three eighths or half of an inch pin and then we're going to top stitch this down to finish the sleeve and we're going to do the same thing from the bottom hem which calls four and a half an inch seam allowance we're going to fold up and pin the half an inch and stitch all around and then that's it we're all done <laughs>